Good morning, good morning, welcome to another day. Here we are again. We're still in lockdown and things feel very restricted, I'm sure. Um, and I, I just want to encourage you not to be downhearted. You know, even in a restricted place, we have reason to hope, reason to press on. Um, it's likely that the book I'm looking at today, Philippians, along with one or two other of the letters, were written by Paul while he was in prison in Rome, in, well, at least in house arrest, if not in prison, um, restricted in what he could do, rather like us. We're, it's a bit like us. We're a bit as if we were under house arrest, because for the most part, we are to stay in our homes, aren't we, um, in this lockdown. And uh, we don't know when it will end, and Paul didn't know when his restricted time would end. But he wrote such encouraging things in Philippians. One of the letters he wrote while he was in a restricted lifestyle. So really, we need to follow his example. He actually says in Philippians 3.17, Brethren, join in imitating me. He said, be like me, Paul said. You know, here I am in prison. I've lost everything. I've given up everything. Um, and he says earlier on in that chapter in verse 7, Whatever gain I had, I counted as loss for the sake of Christ. Whatever he had got in his life was worth nothing to him compared to the knowledge of Jesus. And that's true for us too. And he says in verse 13, Forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead. And again in verse 20, our commonwealth, in other words, our citizenship, is in heaven. And from it we await the Saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will change our lowly body to be like his glorious body. So Paul was restricted. Paul knew, I think, that his life was coming to an end. If not naturally, he was getting older, of course, um, by this time. Um, and sooner or later he would leave this world leave his body behind and get a glorious body. But he was not downhearted. He wasn't sad. He wasn't depressed. He was pressing forward. And he would have had a very restricted number of people with whom he could relate while he was on house arrest. He could relate to his guards and uh, to <coughs> um, maybe a servant or two in his household who provided for him. because uh, and, and in jail, he might have been able to relate to one or two other prisoners <coughs> if he was held in a cell. We're not quite sure where he was <coughs> at the time he wrote this letter. But he certainly was, like us, restricted in what he could do, forcibly restricted. Um, so we can take courage. We can do, as he encouraged the Philippians to do, f to imitate him, to imitate Paul and live our lives wholeheartedly, 100% for Jesus in the situation in which we find ourselves. Um, and he says in the middle of this passage, do read the whole of chapter 3 if you get a chance to, Philippians 3. Um, he, he, he was str striving to know Jesus and the power of his resurrection. He wanted to know Jesus better. And really when we read his writings, he knew the Lord so well. He had learned so much from his days as a Pharisee uh, after his conversion and he learned from the Lord himself so many truths about salvation which he passed on to us in his letters and we are so grateful for that. And yet even at, at this stage, right near the end of his life, he was pressing on to know Jesus better. And we must never be content with where we are. We must always be reaching out and making the most of these opportunities when we are not having to do as much as we used to do, but we have more time to learn, to get to know Jesus better, to get to know the Holy Spirit better, to hear from the Holy Spirit direct. How wonderful to have uh, dreams and visions and words of knowledge. Uh, we've been reading Ezekiel recently, Terry and I, and every every chapter, Three or four times in every chapter he says, the word of the Lord came to me saying, the word of the Lord came to me saying, you know, or I, 
I was told to do this or I was told to do that. Um, we want to be people who are living in the supernatural, who are hearing from God what we should do from moment to moment. We don't want to live an ordinary life. We want to live a life that is filled with the Spirit. And when we do extraordinary things for God in our prayers and in our what we what the Lord prompts us to do as we encounter different things, because even when we just go out to the shops once a week or whatever it is, or out for a walk, we may well see people at a distance and have a chance to speak with them. And we can take them home in our hearts and pray for them. The Lord knows them. We may only have seen them for a brief moment, but the Lord knows them. And um, he responds to our prayer uh, as he seeks to save all those who we meet and all those who we see. He is a great loving God. But this is what I'm trying to, try to say to you is, let's imitate Paul. Let's not be content with where we are. Let's press on. Let's, let's work. Let's press forward. Let's forget the past and go forward. Let's not moan about what we've lost, but press on and get ready for that time when the restrictions will be lifted and the church will have a new day. We won't go back to the old. God forbid that we go back to simply doing what we were doing before because we've had a chance to do new things and try new things as a church fellowship. And we should move on, not go back, not go backwards, but move on and embrace the new ways that Jesus and that Father have opened up for us and the new fellowships that we have developed. Anyway, have a great day. Perhaps read Philippians chapter 3 and think about it before God and ask him, what can I learn from this for my personal walk with God today? And get to know him a bit better. Have a great day. Be blessed and I'll see you tomorrow.